Hi everybody, my name is Gregory Scott, and this is my game, Armored Commander 2, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. Today I'm going to be giving you a preview of what is the 1.0 update. It's the next major update in the game, it's something that I'm working on right now. It's available on a beta branch on Steam, and to get the code, all you need to do is join us over on the Discord server. You can find the code loaded up, and you can see all of the various changes that are happening um, for the next, next big update in the game. Uh, if you're new to the game, it is available on Steam. It's been in, on early access since uh, May of 2020. It's now August of 2021, and I'm getting very, very close to having a version of the game that I feel like is sort of a complete game in and of itself. And that's my, uh, that's my aim with developing this new update, and that's what I hope to do before the end of the summer, at least before the, you know, I guess my absolute latest deadline would be 21st of September to get this update um, out. But that doesn't mean that I'll stop working on the game. I'll continue to add and to, uh, and to update it. All it means is that when this drops, when this is officially you know on Steam and bug checked and everything, this will be more or less uh, my vision for what the game originally would um, encompass. Uh, dozens of campaigns, hundreds of units. And uh, I think even though there's still some gaps in the areas of the war that it covers, I think it's still, you know, it's going to be a, you know, a pretty good game and a pretty good experience if you're into this sort of thing. Um, so for today, I'm going to record a short video. I'm going to be playing through um, one of the campaigns in the update branch. I have my uh, standby image ready just in case there is um, a crash or a bug or something where I have to pause for a moment and fix it. Um, I hope that there won't be any. It seems pretty stable, but you never know what's going to, you know, what's going to come up. Uh, one of the big updates that's coming um, in the next version is this in the middle here. You can see tutorial. Um, I don't know if you can actually see. Yeah, you can probably see my mouse cursor there. Um, the tutorial. It's not quite done yet. Uh, what I have in mind is a kind of a really basic tutorial with a lot of the sort of advanced features turned off to give players a way to learn the game and to kind of ease into the game very easily. And throughout the tutorial, there's going to be three or four days in the campaign and throughout the tutorial, there'll be pop-up, um, like old-timey black and white slides, pop-up messages with kind of guidance and explanation as to what all the various different aspects of the game are. So you can get a similar experience reading through the Steam Guide, but this allows you to kind of dive right in to play the game, to actually, you know, play a sort of a, a simplified version of the game where you're fighting against, you know, wooden targets rather than actual tanks. And uh, hopefully the pop-ups will guide you and give, an, give you enough guidance as to what you're doing. So I'm still working on that. It's not quite ready. There's still, you know, quite a bit more to do, um, but it will be ready to go for the next big, um, for the next big update. If we take a look at our units, currently 619 total units across all different nations and time periods, um, mostly during the period of the Second World War. But of course, there's some. I guess the F, yeah, the FT-17 is is technically a Great War tank, but also some interwar vehicles that, of course, are used um, are used uh, during in the game as well. This will likely continue to grow. Um, at least by uh, by about a dozen or, or so before the next major update. I could easily see it um, hitting 700 units, you know, different unit types by the time we actually um, leave early access. So there's a good number of new units, um, a couple that sort of, you know, fell through the cracks during the first, um, during the earlier updates that are coming in the next major update. Otherwise, the big, um, some of the big changes is that, as you can see here, um, we won't actually see it on this unit. Let me find one where we will. That down on my end a bit. One of these has got to have, yeah. So um, some of these units, um, the portraits now have a kind of a desert um, alternate alternate portrait. So you can see this looks like you know desert camouflage as it would have been used in North Africa. Others will have a winter one. Otherwise, you'll just see the standard one there. So this is a kind of a framework where in the future different alternate portraits can be added into the to the correct folder, and eventually you could see up to six different variants just for a single unit. Um, it's the standard one, so kind of the default one, desert, winter, um, tropical for um, East Asia, or, or you know, rather Southeast Asia, late war, because um, a lot of the units, especially the German units, ended up using a different paint scheme right at the sort of the last two years of the war. And M-A-R, for, right, for marine and naval units. There's a few groups of fighting men who are attached to naval units but end up fighting on the ground anyway, and for them they had a, a you know, different color scheme or a different... Um, camo scheme as well. So that's one of the big changes. There's going to be a lot of units um, that will have alternate portraits, which will make fighting in the desert and fighting in winter conditions a little bit more realistic. Um, the other major differences are that um, I've changed the skill set, uh, sort of the, the skill system for crewmen a little bit, and the injury system for crewmen as well. So I'll kind of talk you through that um, as we encounter it. 
but let's start uh, a new campaign. So let's see, there, um, I don't plan on adding any new campaigns for the big update. A lot of the update stuff is kind of, you know, core game engine stuff. So a lot of this will be familiar to you if you're already playing the current version that is on Steam. Um, I was thinking about doing a kind of a desert campaign because I haven't done one of those in a while. Otherwise, I could just jump into the Battle of France because I really like the French tanks. Um, and I, I do find that they're, they're a lot of fun. Maybe I'll do that. Set the combat days to four. I don't know how, how many days I'll actually get through. Probably not all that many. Um, but I'll just jump in, you know, again, basically just to show off to you uh, the features that are coming in the next update. So one of the changes is that um, the input system for the campaign options is a little bit different. You can cycle them on and off, which helps with the enemy AI difficulty. You can just cycle it over to very hard. Um, it's a relatively minor thing. It, you'll probably only notice it if you've already played the game a lot and have gotten used to the previous system. Um, otherwise, there is a new um, option in the new update, Armored Cars. There's going to be the option in just about every campaign to command an armored car rather than commanding a tank. Uh, it's a lot more challenging. You have less armor and uh, less powerful gun for the most part. But uh, it could be interesting because you're a lot faster. You have these kind of like, um, like uh, recce powers, which means that you're harder to hit and harder to spot. So that is an option, doesn't modify the total victory points um, that's coming in the next update as well. So I'm gonna set up my campaign options. Explosion, fate points off. Sounds good. We'll proceed. So we've got the, the old school, these were the tanks that were developed right at the end of the Great War. The Renault FT, which I think stands for fast fast tank, right? Um, some, of the earliest, some of the earliest kind of modern looking tanks in history. Uh, the French have a really nice selection, everything from very light tanks all the way up to these, you know, pretty much super heavy tanks as well. Um, but for me, I usually like to pick something in the middle. Um, S35 is definitely one of my favorites, either the S35 or the R35. Um, I think I'll go with an S35. Um, another big system that is coming up in the next big update, you'll see it indicated here, this NR in the corner of the portrait means that this tank model is not equipped with a radio. So you have to rely on signals, on flags, and on shouting at messengers to communicate with the rest of your army and with others. The, uh, the differences here are going to be rather subtle, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to call in support, a little bit more difficult to call in resupply, and a little bit more difficult to actually effectively communicate with your squad mates and other allies as well, because you have to like you know yell at them or otherwise send them some kind of a visual message you don't have access to um, to a radio. And a lot of these um, early war French tanks actually did not have a radio fitted. I don't know if there's one that actually did. No, none of these, none of these actually historically had a radio. I think one of them had like a Morse code device, but it's probably not, you know, not as effective to actually count as a, as a real radio. All right, so let's go with the uh, S35. So we begin. Um, one little difference I added is uh, that in the crew menu now, if your crew man has one or more advance points to be sent to be spent, it will show you. Um, so you can see here, my commander gunner has five to spend and the other crewman has one. I did this because I was playing through and I kept forgetting that my uh, crewman had gone up a level and I had an advance point to spend. So this is just kind of a nice little reminder about what you can do with this crewman. Um, you can also see it at the bottom of the menu here, advance points five. Uh, this is, um, it doesn't look different now, but the whole injury system has been revised so that injuries in all of these locations on crewmen can start off fresh when they first happen, then they can be patched up and they can be healing over a number of days and then they can be healed and those can also leave scars which have long-term effects for the crewmen um, as well. So hopefully, I guess I said, hopefully I'll get an injury and I can actually show you um, how it works. Well, another big change coming up in the, in the next update is the skills now, most of the skills have, have a minimum stat requirement before you can purchase it. So if you wanted to get, for example, driver direction, which uh, increases the effect of um, directing your driver when you're moving around, you need a perception stat of at least five. This means that when you're planning your crewmen and planning your development over, over levels, you have to bear in mind spending points on skills in order to get the stats that you want as well. And I mean, stats have a lot of um, uh, benefits to the game. They're, they're good to add, especially morale and grit. They kind of protect your, um, protect your crewmen from fatigue and from injury. Um, I've changed the way that knowledge works. Knowledge used to be um, a kind of a, I don't know, like it's it sped up the rate at which experience points were gained, but now knowledge adds uh, a base bonus to all skills. Uh, every time that the crewman does an action or uses a skill, 
the knowledge stat will add a small bonus to that. Um, and a perception, of course, is used mainly for spotting enemy units, which is extremely important in this game. Um, so I think I'll, I'll show you, for example, if we look through here and we think, well, what's the first skill that we want to give our commander? Our commander in this tank is also the gunner, so we probably want to give him some kind of a gunner um, skill. Let's see, crack shot is probably good, pretty good. To get a uh, crack shot, we need a perception of at least four. So let's uh, spend a point to increase our perception. Bloop. And now we go back to the menu and now you see these skills are now highlighted because we have the minimum perception stat in order to purchase them. So I'm gonna buy crack shot. There you go. And I've got three points left so I can use these either increasing, I'll definitely increase grit. I think twice, that'll help me survive. And then if I go back here, let's see, maybe, I don't really plan on, on being exposed all that often, but if I do have to pop my head out, um, quick reflexes will help keep me alive. So let's do that, and I'll just add the last two. Can't buy any skills yet, so let's add some grit for the other two. Again, just to help them survive the day, basically. Otherwise, nothing much has changed in um, sort of this level, so let's get on and start. I fixed uh, the full change log for the next update is enormous. There's a lot of little things that are fixed. Things like if you do want to input um, special characters in your tank name or your crewman name, that works now, whereas it didn't before. Um, but that's relatively minor. So let's get started. So our, our um, mission today is a counterattack. We'll mostly be defending our territory against the enemy who's coming at us. So in the um, S-35, we have a 47 millimeter gun. It has HE, high explosive, and AP armor piercing. So let's load those up. Looks to be good for me. Um, one thing you can do in the next uh, update is that you can save a gun loadout. So if you have a, a sort of a, um, a balance of ammo that you find works really well, you can save it in the gun and it will stay with your tank from day to day. So the next day when you start, all you have to do is hit F and it will load your loadout and it will apply it right away. You don't have to go with the autofill, which may or may not actually be the best option. It's up to you as to how you want to play it. So that was, um, and that's another one of those features that was requested on the Discord and now is, um, is in the game. So what do we have? It's May 17th, 1940. It's un unseasonably hot, I think, for um, sort of northeastern France. It's extreme hot temperatures today, which means that our crewmen are more likely to, um, to be fatigued, so we'll have to watch out for that. The weather is overcast, so we don't have any air support, but if we did, we wouldn't be able to call it in. There's no winds at the moment. Uh, this wind level is a new thing that, we're, um, that I'm adding for the next major update. Basically, wind will affect how fast the ground dries up if it's not raining, and as well, how fast things like um, smoke dissipates and how much dust will, will sort of be created around, um, around units in the game. Um, dust matters much more in, in sort of dry, um, like North Africa desert maps rather than maps such as this. So let's get started and see what, uh, see what happens. So in terms of objectives, we have a capture, a rescue, and a hold. Well, the hold shouldn't be too much trouble. We'll see how much ground we actually lose. Um, but let's just first do some recon and see what's around. So armored car, medium tank, and a truck, not too bad. Um, I do have a squad of, it were three in total. That's not too bad. Um, one thing that I added is I changed the name of this menu to battle group because that's, you know, really what it is. Um, your current command is basically the default command that you give to your squad mates once the attack begins. I'm going to change this to attack my target because um, if I'm attacking something, we probably want it to be destroyed and thus I want them to focus on it as much as possible as well. Um, so let's do one more recon just to see what's there. Infantry squad, medium tank, line tank. I'm going to attack this zone and try to get closer to the capture. So if there's a medium tank there, I'm going to request some anti-tank support as I move. Um, Anti-armor, another new addition is this extra category, armored support, which basically gives you possible support units taken from the tanks that you as a player could possibly play. So it's all of the sort of the mainline tanks from the campaign. Um, uh, that's, what, that's the main list from which the random units will be drawn from. So this is adding on to artillery units, recon units, um, usually fast moving um, armored cars and things like that, anti-infantry specialists and anti-armor. And since 
really, the armored car should be okay. It's the medium tank I'm worried about. I'm going to call in an anti-armor support, and we'll s go into the zone and see what happens. So we got a battle, and we have an SAL-4 who arrived. We were ambushed by the enemy. That means they get a chance to move first, but they didn't move around, and they didn't do any attacks, at least not on the first, you know, not in the... Um, not on the initial uh, uh, round, on the, on the initial activation. So what do we have as support? As support, SAL-34, it's a 25 millimeter extra long barreled um, anti-tank gun. So uh, it seems like a fairly new one. The standard anti-tank gun of French forces should be quite helpful. There's three enemies, one at uh, medium range, two at long range. Um, at the moment, um, one thing I can do is set up my default actions. So the one downside to these French tanks is that usually the commander is also the gunner. So it's kind of, and this was historical as well, it's kind of too many things for one person to do. Um, well done, there's a bug right there. I mean, this the command battle group, let's see, the command battle group, um, command doesn't actually fit into, uh, into the uh, context console there. So let me write that down. Command battle group. It in context console, fix that later. So far, so good. I didn't even have to bring out the um, the you know out of gas broken down image to uh, just as a placeholder. All right, so I'll fix that later. Um, but I think yeah, basically the commander should be operating the gun, so I'll set that as his default. Driver might as well put him on drive. Assistant driver. Now I'm regretting it. This is actually not that great of a tank, is it? It's got no radio, and the assistant driver doesn't have a hatch, so they are limited to spotting just in front of me. This is, all right, well, driver, you know what? You're gonna have to spot. So I'm gonna open his hatch, even though it's gonna, he's gonna be more vulnerable. I need to find out what these units are, so I need to know what to prioritize. And the assistant driver, why is he there? What is he good for? He can spot, he can pass up ammo, but there's not even like a whole machine gun or anything. All right, assistant driver. Um, this is a new this is a new um, action as well that I added in the, uh, for this new update. You can actually fire small arms like um, carbines and pistols from your tank if you have an open hatch or if you're otherwise you know exposed to the outside world. Not a great idea because um, it's not going to do a lot. Like a single pistol isn't going to do much against a whole you know rifle you know squad. But in you know if in desperate times you know one or two firepower that it, that it produces could. Uh, it could save you. It could spell the difference between getting taken out and uh, and not. But um, yeah, for the moment, assistant driver doesn't even have a hatch, so he can't he can't poke his gun out. All right, so I guess might as well pass ammo just in case I do use the gun. So there's a truck, and that's all I've spotted right now. So it's just a standard German truck. Could be carrying riflemen. Could could be carrying a small team. Who knows? Let's try and take it out. Fire some high explosives. Animists. Ooh, Panzer III. Okay. That, that just went to the top of my list in terms of priority. So my squad mates now are helping me. Hopefully they can do better. The anti-tank is firing the truck. Oh, that sound effect is really loud. I have to, I have to um, adjust that. All right, so this is now our primary... Yeah, this is now our, our primary target. Panzer III F. Um, 37 millimeter gun, long barreled, not as armored as we are. So if we can hit it, we should be able to take it out. So I think, what kind of terrain are we in? It's in wooden buildings. All right, you button up because we have enough to deal with right now. And let's try that. I'm gonna to try to get into a good position first and then take some shots at the pants of three. So let's reposition into broken ground. Yes. All right, so now we have a little bit more cover. And this is going to be our next target. Because we moved, because we moved into, we re repositioned ourselves, um, we don't have a very good chance to hit. So I'm not going to fire this turn. Another change for the new update is I had to um, change the names of a lot of the standard weapons. So coax machine gun became a Bow 
Bow Machine Gun or uh, became um, no Hull Machine Gun became Bow Machine Gun B, uh, BMG. Um, but hopefully, you will you'll as you play, you'll see them so often, you'll just you'll automatically remember, and um, you know you'll instantly be able to remember and recall what it means. If you ever forget, um, always feel free to hit F1. You can bring it up the uh, the glossary and you hit go to C. What's the CMG coaxial machine gun? And it gives you the explanation right there in the game. And there's actually two um, languages as well. So there's a German um, glossary and an English one. Those are the only ones we have so far. All right, so what happens? The truck is at close range. Um, line of sight is blocked. That means there's something on the map that's um, between me and the truck, which means I can't fire it at, uh, directly. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is that the truck could uh, drop some kind of like an infantry team or something which is riding in the back. But considering that I don't have line of sight, there's not a whole lot that I can do at the moment. Um, I think though, even though he's at long range, um, I'm gonna try to take a shot at the Panzer III. So that means I'm not gonna move. 6.1, not great, because the target's moving, but let's give it a shot. Miss and no rate of fire, okay. Hopefully it won't move. Yeah, take out that truck, guys. Yes, all right, truck is gone and the HMG team is gone. So the Panzer III is still moving. I think I need to get up closer. So I'm gonna try and move forward. Okay, not far enough, that's all right. Uh, and the other unit's an armored car. Like I still want to reduce the distance. There we go. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why sometimes they, enemies, they choose enemies to attack armored targets. I, I'm, I'm trying to discourage them from doing that, but it seems to be difficult. Um, so let's see, moving, moving, I'm in broken ground. I think I'm going to manage the ready rack filled up with HP and meanwhile try to get uh, hauled down. Sounds good. Because I know I'll need HP rounds, or uh, sorry, AP rounds. Not HP rounds, that would be something, you know, a delicious, a delicious sauce round, AP rounds. Okay. Couldn't go haul down, at least I count as moving. My squad mates are giving it a go. I guess it's because they are quite lightly armored on the side, so... But I mean, a machine gun would... It would still need like a 2 on a 2d6 to, uh, to penetrate, so I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's just... Let's sit tight now. Ooh, that's not bad. 25, yes. And ready rack... Okay, so ready rack is on. Let's go. Man missed. I don't think I've hit yet. Is there a move? All right, so do I shoot at the armored car, which is stationary? No, 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 I gotta take out the tank. Missed again. Come on, guys. Yes, squad mate. Now all that's left is an armored car. Oh, that's the worst roll I can get. There's a thousand possible rolls and that is the worst one. What's wrong with me today? All right, squad mates are, are, are carrying my weight. All right, so that zone is captured. Refill the ready rack. What does this objective look like? Self-propelled AA gun. Um, that's probably not too bad. The real thing to watch out for with the German forces, if it says there's an AA gun, it, it could be an ADH. That's just about the only thing that can take out this kind of heavy armor on the front. And infantry squad, that's not too bad. Um, so I'll call in some support, maybe some artillery support. Got the whole objective, it wasn't too hard. Enemy resistance in the capture zone. Thanks, guys. 
And no unit support. Great. Not here on my own. Okay, well. Again, driver, you got a spot. And assistant driver. Might as well pass ammo. Uh, heavy mortar team. Let's try to take out that. Hit, finally! And the other one is, I think, unarmored AA gun. Four firepower. Well, it's pinned anyway. I'm guessing these HE rounds aren't very powerful. No, don't attack me! <laughs> well, it's pinned. Hopefully not. Oh, great. Nine firepower. No effect. My driver is okay. <laughs> Button up. And yeah, that's it. Just fire again. That's what I'm fire attack. Almost ended my driver's whole career. There we go. And this thing, unarmored, so HE rounds would be uh, best. And it's got a 20L gun, so no real, no real threat to, to our armor anyway. But I'll just turn around just in case. And fire next turn. Uh, since it's moving, I'll use the coax instead. Because it is unarmored. Wow, whole two firepower. Well, potentially we could get six. Maybe eight if one of them's critical. No, we got three. And it's fine. Let's move it around. Keep firing. Two firepower. Ha! That's good and hack it. Bye! All right, got that objective, and now I'm stuck in a corner, so I've only got really one, one way out. Two medium tanks and a motorcycle team. Great. Um, let's get some anti-armor. <laughs> No artillery. Are we got another AT gun and an AT rifle. Um, but two units have spawned just behind us. So good. Can we... I'm going to try to get some distance. And I'll do. And does it make sense to fire off? Yeah, why not? You never know. It probably won't do any damage, but increases the chance that they're actually spotted. The Panzer three, yeah. Ah, oh, that's another difference. Um, resolve this first, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they'll die before I can tell you about it. It's possible they're getting hit a lot. 12 firepower. They're okay, they're just pinned. Um, in the new update, anti-tank guns and um, uh, AT rifles and some other of the kind of the support weapon weapons uh, teams now have two statuses. They could either be packed up, which is the state with this, which is what um, is happening with this gun, or deployed. And all of these weapons need to be deployed to fire, but once they're deployed, they can't move. They need to pack up before they can move. So this gun was probably being transported and was surprised by the enemy units, or and now they have to try to deploy the gun before they can actually um, fire it off. And before they do, they're actually quite vulnerable, and of course they can't, they can't fire. They don't have any actual attacks. So we have a motorcycle MG team and Panzer III. Again, I think the Panzer III is the main concern here. Let's fire. 
We've got a good anti-tank gun, might as well use it. Another hit, pretty good chance to penetrate. Go, that's how you do it. And we get another chance with another one. Why are you using a machine gun? Come on. You got an anti-tank gun for a reason. All right, they're deployed, so they'll be able to, to fire next turn. Next to uh, turn. No effect. Two for two. Two for two. Two up, two down. That's why I like the S35, because it has a fantastic gun for 1940. A lot of the other things going on aren't great, but you've got a 47, and that's something. All right, fighting our way out of this little corner. Supply is pretty good. Lots of rounds. What do we got here? Support weapon team. Um, abundance of caution. I'll use advancing fire moving in. So far, so good. Oh, we were attacked. So we have no idea what this is. Um, nothing yet. Point of line of sight. And can we spot? And the three. D model this time. So, button him up. Uh, it's moving in the woods, so very difficult. Came out of the woods. That's a miss. shot. And I got a little more unit support. Very welcome. Oh, and I was attacked. And these Germans are not fooling around, are they? Um, we got a unit at close range, so I'm going to button up my driver. It's just too risky. Uh, 38A, so... Again, not a bad time. Really well. Very light armor on the side, though. Yeah, and I think basically with that light armor, if you hit it with the 47 at close range, that's it. No chance to save. So truck, motorcycle team, truck, and a light tank versus infantry squad, medium tank, light tank. Um, eh, fewer tanks the better, I think. Tanks, but tanks, but no tanks. Anti-armor support. Resistance. Nice. So we have this. This is a seventy-five millimeter gun mounted on the back of a truck. It's unarmored. So it might not stick around very long, but um, it can take out tanks for sure. And then we have a nice little SAM-34 gun. All right, so again, we have a unit close to us. Um, it's not in line of sight, but if it's an infantry unit, it could do a close uh, close range attack. So getting the button up, switch to the coax. So two trucks at long range. <laughs> No effect, but it'll probably be um, So I have line of sight on it. Maybe spot. Yeah. 
Uh, motorcycle MGT. Okay, so do it with the coax. Perfect. Oh, Panzer II! It's so cute! Light tank, a motorcycle team, and two trucks. Still try to take out the tank though. So get on the gun, pass ammo. If you're wondering about why that one squad mate didn't attack my target, even though that's it's it's probably because they don't have line of sight. Running away, huh? Um, I probably can't hit it from here. Yeah. Stopped. 1.9%. Oh my gosh! Crewman fatigue minus 16. What's going on? Hold on. I didn't even know to go up that high. That's crazy. Oh, because it's an extremely hot day. Um, what's going on? Minus 8, minus 6. So that's probably it. it has minus 8. Um, Fatigue points. Yikes. Well, that's pretty severe. All right. Well, I guess I'll just do the best I can and then. I mean, I wonder if I should withdraw from this battle and rest for a bit. That's probably a good idea. It's so hot. Yeah. Oh, wasn't able to. Um, another change is I made withdrawing a little bit more difficult. It's easier if you have um, smoke covering you, but otherwise it won't be a kind of, you know, sort of an automatic thing. Um, It's going to be tough if I'm so tired. Let's see. Do I have smoke grenades? Yes. Didn't work. All right. It would have been better to do those in the other order. Yeah, that's some serious fatigue. I guess they're very green. Um, they don't yet have um, a very high level of morale, and it's an extreme hot day. So, mm. with the rescue mission, you always you always encounter resistance. It's automatic. So there's going to be a medium tank there no matter what. Um, I'm going to try to wait in place and see what happens. Hopefully I won't get attacked. Come on, fatigue. Nope, got attacked. Well, this is the difficulty with a really green crew, isn't it? On my car. I'm definitely not going to hit it.
Chevy Chase. Still can't edit it. You know, as long as it moves and as long as I'm this there's no way I can hit it. It'd be nice if one of my squad mates helped me out, but let's just get right into close range. Moving. <coughs> okay, it's a bit immobilized. Great. All right, now it's a sitting duck. I just had to wait for its tires to fall off. That's all I had to do. <coughs> Yay! Okay. It still counts as a win. It still counts as a win. Oh, now my driver's getting. All right, I gotta. I gotta take some rest. Let's get out of here. I gotta come off the front lines for a bit. Oh, the front lines are following us. Need an oasis. Nope. Whoops. All right, didn't mean to do that. That's okay. Always reset it later. Giving up all this territory just because we're tired. And we're done. Well, we survived anyway. So we took out a truck, three Panzer III Fs, uh, one Panzer III D, a 38 TA, um, two motorcycle teams, heavy mortar team, and two PSW 222 armored cars. Um, so that's 57 victory points plus 75% with the campaign options, which means a total of 100. Not bad for a day. And two levels up for my driver and assistant driver. So I didn't get to show you the, um, the detailed injury system, but basically um, rather than injuries in, the, in the, sort of the current live version of the game where you get them during the day and at the end of the day you either die, you're sent to the field hospital or the injury disappears, now you can have the injuries that actually kind of persist and give you relatively minor uh, uh, sort of negative modifiers over a few days before they become uh, completely healed. So that's one of the major changes um, uh, for the game. All right, so I'm going to end it uh, there. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my one day playing through uh, the Battle of France, showing us off some of the features that are in the works for the next major update. So again, uh, if you own the game on Steam, go into the Steam game, the properties, go into betas, um, and enter the code that you can get from the game's um, Discord. The code to join the Discord is on, it's, it's pinned at the top of the Steam discussion forums. It's very easy to find. Join us on the, on the Discord, get the beta code, opt into the beta, and if you'd like, try it out. These are the new features that I'm working on. And as I said, my plan is before the end of the summer, this um, new update is going to be complete. All the features are going to be finished, and it will go on as the um, as sort of the core, you know, the, the mainstream, the main branch on Steam. And at that point, the game will be out of early access. It'll be released, released, as opposed to just kind of like baby released. Um, but as I said before, it's not going to be the end. Um, it's not the beginning of the end, it's the end of the beginning. And um, after that, I'm going to continue to work on the game to expand it. Um, just I feel like all the features that I had planned and all the various aspects of the game will finally be in place um, by that point. So I hope you enjoyed it, and um, thanks very much for watching. <laughs>